Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about four brand new manga that I recently acquired and I have been anxiously waiting to talk about it with all of you. So let's get started. The first one here is Blood Blade Volume 1. This is published by Kodansha and it is written and drawn by Oma Sei. And it tells the story of the famous Count Dracula in an alternate history Europe as he is reborn as a katana wielding vampiress. Now soon after this, at the start of the story, we find the character of Clara. She is on the run from a certain bad guy and she turns out to be this golem or at least inspired by Frankenstein's monster. Chased down by an assassin, Clara stumbles upon Vlad, who is now this young girl with a sword and an assistant alongside her. Vlad then rescues her from this bad guy, and we soon find out about both of these girls' origins. Long story short, our evildoer does show up again, and we do find out that he is part of an evil human organization called Cerberus, and their goal is to harness monster powers and eliminate these creatures, so characters like Vlad and Clara are now seemingly teaming up and look for a supposed monster island as stated by Dr. Frankenstein and Clara herself, an island where supposedly there will be no human interference and these monster creatures can live in peace without being hunted and persecuted by humanity. That's sort of a generalized plot description of this series. What's interesting here for Bloodblade, and I find it pretty noteworthy, is that Oma Sei and Kodansha here have teamed up to publish this manga in English first. So we are getting the heads up for this series and it will eventually be published in Japanese. I think that's pretty awesome and I hope to see that format in the future. Okay, so on paper, I would be down 100% for this book. It has monsters, it is violent, it has all the folklore and a history of these famous characters. So what is not to love? This manga is action-packed. I really enjoy the art style from Oma Sei. It's very detailed, uh, but also retains sort of the cutesy element when certain facial expressions are around. But it's not afraid to show you the grotesque and the hyper detailed violence and blood and all that stuff because at the end of the day this is a creature horror story that focuses on Dracula. The violence in this thing is intense. I like it. I also enjoy the fact that it hits the ground running right away. It wastes no time with introductions. You see Vlad, she spots Clara in danger, swoops in and the two meet and the story just goes off from there. We find out about Cerberus and the introductions for these characters that Clara is this golem creature created by uh, Dr. Frankenstein and Vlad of course is a reincarnated Count Dracula now in the body of of a young girl with katanas. That's odd, but let's go with it because it's pretty freaking badass. Now, unfortunately, I do want to point out some negatives. The first one is the translation. Now, by no means am I an expert in the Japanese language. This is obviously written in Japanese and translated first for the English market before being released over there. However, the dialogue in this series is very clunky at times. The way uh, characters are being addressed and the way they uh, behave and tell their narratives and all that stuff, it all felt kind of jumbled at times. I don't know if it's my copy from Kodansha, but this one feels of a lesser quality. The paper stock is very thin and the printing itself, the inks and all that stuff, it just looks, I don't know, a little less than standard from what I'm accustomed to when it comes to Kodansha releases. It might be my copy or it might be every copy. Who knows? <laughs> and the last thing I'm going to mention when it comes to negatives is the paneling and art direction here from the mangaka Oma Sei, there are a lot of panels and headshots that are reused time and time again. When I first noticed it, I thought, huh, okay, well, it makes sense that you would use, like the cover here with Vlad, you would think, okay, that's a cool pose. That's an actual scene from the story, and the author copies it a couple pages later in another shot, which, okay, it happens all the time, you know, you, you make that uh, cost effective, but then I saw it a third time, and a fourth time, and sometimes even a fifth time. It got pretty funny trying to spot it, and there are a 
other reaction shots or certain drawings of these characters where you see them time and time again. Now, I can't draw. I used to, but I'm not good at it anymore. So I don't want to criticize that. I'm just pointing these things out. It's pretty funny and it made it a little bit less enjoyable because I was focusing on these technicalities instead of enjoying this action romp B monster type story of freaking Dracula as a katana wielding princess, but I still want to read this. There's so much fun to be had with this story. So by all means, do not take this as me not recommending it. I think it's awesome. So if you're a fan of horror stories and creatures, folklore, monsters, action, uh, blood, and, and all that gore goodness, then you'll be right at home with Bloodblade. But do be aware of some of the issues that I pointed out here on this mini uh, first impression slash review. The next one that we are talking about is A Kingdom of Quartz. This is Volume 1 by Bomhat. This was one of my most anticipated books from this batch. I was really looking forward to reading this. And the reason this video came out so late is because I was waiting for this book to arrive. It finally did and I was able to read through it pretty quickly. The scenes flow pretty easily here, but it was a lot of fun. This is labeled as a sumptuous dark fantasy. We follow an orphan girl named Blue who lives in this kingdom that is segmented into like four districts and they protect the crowning kingdom of Quartz. It's all surrounded by angels and it takes a lot of cues from Judeo-Christian iconography and uh, mythology and all these things where we have essentially a story about angels versus demons. And the character of Blue, she's always dreamt of becoming an angel, but there is some prejudice because of her unusual black wings. She is saved from a prank gone wrong as she was trying to stop these kids from bullying another, and she slipped from a balcony and fell and was saved by one of the top ranking angels in this kingdom. When people noticed that she had black wings, they of course tried throwing food at her and cursing at her, telling Blue that she was a demon. So we see a lot of discrimination towards characters characters like that and other angel characters that have one wing or I guess I shouldn't call them angels because you have to take a certification exam to become one. They sort of act like knights in the kingdom. Think of it like that. They can fly and have abilities, I guess, with swords and all that, and makes for a very engaging, beautiful read. One of the best aspects of this volume is the art. I did not know about Bomhat. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. And this creator just is wickedly talented. I love the art here. It's a cross between cartoonish and elegance with a little fantastical thrown into the mix. The villains or the demon themselves, they are based on the biblically accurate angels. If you've seen the drawings on those and that took me by surprise, I thought they were going to be drawn like Oni or traditional like Lucifer type demons and stuff like that. But no, they're more weird and eldritch in nature. <laughs> But really the star of this series, aside from the art, is Blue. I really enjoy this character. She's awesome. A very wholesome, optimistic character. And one of my favorite panels from this, aside from the gorgeous visuals when she's staring face to face, this giant eyeball of a demon, is when she remembers her caretaker and one of the heads of the orphanage. And she tells her that even though when she was young, she lost one of her wings, in an accident, she was thrown out and people said she was cursed and could sympathize with Blue for being ostracized for her looks and being quote unquote different. But she tells her that she doesn't know why Blue was born with black wings, but believes everything happens for a reason. And one day you will find your purpose. Until then, have fun faith. That scene was my favorite thing out of the whole book and found myself in those shoes for certain reasons outside of YouTube or whatever and really got motivated by that and a little teary eyed and made me want to root for this character even more. After certain events happen, there is sort of this training arc that starts and ends in a cliffhanger. So I am very much looking forward to Blue's adventures and the possibility of her becoming an official angel for the kingdom. 
and defending the goddess and all that stuff. So definitely do give a Kingdom of Quartz a shot if you like the whole angels versus demons and the underdog story of Blue, an orphan, trying to become something much greater than herself. It's a very universal theme that I know a lot of people can get behind. So definitely do give it a shot. I think Kodansha knocked it out of the park with the release for this one compared to Bloodblade. I don't know, maybe I'm salty with that uh, Bloodblade QC issue, but that's just me. The next one is smoking behind the supermarket with you. This is published by Square Enix Manga, and that is pretty awesome. This is a story that is written and drawn by Jinushi. And if memory serves me right, the mangaka has published most of this on Twitter or drawings of it, and it, this is collected from that. It tells the story of a 45-year-old office worker called Sasaki, who is going through that corporate grind. He is exhausted by being overworked. His boss isn't necessarily the kindest, and there's just a lot of stress with his corporate job. And one of his highlights, which is pretty pathetic, but kind of relatable, is that at the end of the day, he can leave work, go to the local convenience store on his way home, buy some cigarettes and food from a lovely young girl called Yamada, who is one of the cashiers at the convenience store. So at the start of the manga, Sasaki follows this routine and finds that Yamada is not present that day at the convenience store. A little bummed out, he leaves, but catches a glimpse of somebody behind the supermarket who is smoking cigarettes. She is a stunning young girl who invites him to share a smoke with her. Her name is Tayama and Sasaki doesn't realize that he kind of already knows her. Of course, Tayama is aware that Sasaki is kind of clueless and does not realize that she is Yamada, so she has a perfect opportunity to tease our protagonist by creating two different personalities. Obviously, she is tired of behaving nicely, so she takes this opportunity to vent her frustrations, I guess, and smoke it out at the end of a work shift at the back of the store. So there is some relation between the two characters in this aspect. Sasaki is too wholesome, naive, and good-spirited. He doesn't realize that he's making a fool of himself by thinking that these are two separate characters and will tell Tayama of Yamada and confess about, you know, uh, his corporate grind and wanting to see Yamada every day because it sort of alleviates his soul because she is so nice. Tayama blushes but keeps up with the gags and wants to tease him further. So if you read stuff like teasing Takagi-san or Uzaki-chan wants to hang out, you know of the teasing subgenre in manga. And this pretty much is an adult version of that. It also has that style and cool factor that reminds me of things like Call of the Night, for example, from Kotoyama, where you have sort of these characters going through the motions of life and meeting at this specific place most of the time at night under the lights of the convenience store and just sharing a cigarette i guess using that to vent away their frustrations and form a relationship this gag manga slash slice of life slash romance if you will is really sweet and earnest it has a lot of fun poking at our main protagonist and his clueless nature but i fear that as we keep reading more and more volumes, it's going to be more of the same. And I mean this in the most positive way. If you read this volume, you pretty much have the highs and lows story beat wise, and you don't really need more. You want more because you can't get enough of these two characters and you want to see what else happens to them, what other uh, hilarious moments they get caught in. But again, it's a slice of life where you have this character revisiting the convenience store and not figuring out that Yamada and Tayama are the same. So that gag gets repeated over and over. So I could see some people being turned off by that. But again, if you enjoy these two characters, their relationship and uh, the jokes and all that stuff, I think you'll be happy to come back for a volume two. One of the aspects that I thought I was going to be 100% on board, but I wasn't a huge fan of was the art. It's not necessarily for me 100% of the times, but I do like 
like it. It's charming enough. It's well drawn. It's just not to my preferred styles, but I do recommend it regardless. If you like a good comedy series with romance and slice of life elements and all that stuff, smoking behind the supermarket with you might be that something that you can relate to. These are characters that are very down to earth and have very human problems. There are no Deus Ex Machina. There's no otherworldly plot. It's not an isekai. None of that. It's just characters going through the motions of life and its hardships and connecting on the most simplest of things of just sharing a cigarette and being friends. The last book that we're going to talk about is a nude model and other stories from Tsubasa Yamaguchi. She is the same mangaka that created Blue Period, which is also a manga based on art. And this was quite the experience. As you know, in this channel, I love talking about short story collections. They're some of my favorite things to collect when it comes to comic books and manga. And we get three short stories here that tackle similar themes of obsession, love, and even eroticism. So in the first story, Nude Model, we have the story of a delinquent young man who is dared by his other delinquent friends to seduce this introverted girl who draws and as part of this really sick, cruel game. At first, the boy is eager to participate, but as soon as he starts interacting with this girl, things begin to change in a very interesting way. The dynamics change and the relationship becomes a little bit twisted. The second story is called Girl, and this one threw me for a loop. This is very not safe for work in nature. It even carries a warning label for sexual assault, and it tells the story of this boy who, I guess, to fulfill his erotic needs, has an unusual auditory fetish where he uh, records himself and that leads into other hijinks in this book. And the third story is called Kamiya, which is about a doctor who can't stand the sight of blood and she overcomes her phobia thanks to a host club staffed by vampires. Now what's cool about this book is that all three stories, I think definitely stick the landing. You don't see the twist coming and it makes for a much more engaging read. I don't necessarily wanna spoil what happens in here because I want you to experience it. So I'm just giving you my impressions and my overall spoiler free review, but this was really freaking good. I enjoyed all three stories. Tsubasa Yamaguchi does a fantastic job of tackling these narratives and creating something unique. I love the idea that with Kamiya, for example, it's a doctor. She is expected to handle all sorts of dangerous things and cases and patients and moments with blood and all that, but she's afraid of blood. And you sneak in the supernatural with this supposed nightclub of vampires, and they're known for consuming blood. So mixing those two elements together makes for a very compelling character progression for the main doctor here, as she grows grows to overcome her fear. And just for the hell of it, the author throws in a phenomenal horror aspect to it that when it hits, it hits hard. And I was not expecting that finale. I loved it. Girl, even though it's the most erotic in nature because of this character having this uh, need to record himself doing this and word gets around so people get excited, but the main character has some very nuts so good opinions about girls in general. So that's an interesting subject here with the characters dealing with being teenagers in school and sexuality. How hormones can basically drive kids to do and say the most absurd things. And nude model I thought was the most romantic story out of the bunch and was actually pretty sweet. There is some malice to it, but the characters, as they get to know each other, they evolve and change their perception of things. And that is awesome to see. So even though these three stories might not be not safe for work, they are really good reads and teaches you about understanding your fellow human being in a darker, twisted, and kind of erotic way. I know it's unorthodox, but I think 
the mangaka does a great job at it. So I highly recommend it. If you're a fan of short stories or if you are a fan of Blue Period, you might want to check out Nude Model with these three stories. Definitely do give it a shot. I think this is a really cool release from uh, Kodansha. So there it is, folks, another reading vlog. I genuinely enjoyed going through these four books and I'm actively looking forward to volume twos for three of the books that I talked about here. But what about you guys? Have you read these books? Let me know in the comment section down below if you have. And if you haven't, what are some other similar books that you think I should check out? Thank you everybody for liking, commenting, and being a part of Manga Geekdom. I truly do appreciate it. That's going to be it for now. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.